welcome to the next lecture and welcome to welcome to the next part of the titration lecture and in this video we are going to talk about potentiometric titration so potentiometric titration does not um, capture a specific type of titration reactions but rather a specific type of detection of the end point of the titration reaction and potentiometric titration or potentiometric detection of the titration endpoint can be applied for uh, acid-based titration, it can be applied for redox reactions, it can be applied also for complex formation, it can be applied for many different types of titration reactions. So what is this potentiometric titration? Uh, it is about determining the endpoint of the titration reaction with the uh, potentiometric measures. So this is by potentiometrically measuring the change of the concentration of the analyte or the titrant in the solution. And uh, one of the most simple examples of applying potentiometric titration is in the sense of acid-based titration. So in the previous video, we looked at how to determine the end point of the acid-based titration with the indicator. And we had a problem that we needed to find the um, indicator that very sharply changes color at the jump of the titration curve. So at very close to the stoichiometric point um, the uh, titration curve. However, in case of um, acid-based titration, we could do also a different thing. We could just take a pH meter and put the glass electrode of the pH meter into the solution that we are titrating. And constantly, each time we add a tiny drop of the titrant, record what happens to the pH of the solution. So this is what can be seen on the left-hand figure. Uh, so we do a titration of the same uh, hydrochloric um, acetic acid solution and we titrate it with the sodium hydroxide. And uh, we record how the pH is changing during the addition of the sodium hydroxide. And we, by this we can visualize the titration curve. Here each of the points means one reading from the pH meter. So re we record both from the burette how much sodium hydroxide was added and from the uh, pH meter what was the pH at this specific point. So the first thing that we could do from here is that we could visually read what was the stoichiometric point and determine the end point by this. Just visually looking, okay, this seems to be here like the sharpest point uh, of, uh, or in the titration curve. Oh, so we say that 10 milliliters was the uh, end point of this titration. But sometimes when the uh, titration uh, curves are not so uh, steep, the jump is not so high, uh, then we be, can be not so clear with that. And therefore, in potentiometric titrations, we can also uh, take a derivative of um, the reading relative to the titrant volume. So in case of uh, acid-based titration, this is the change uh, in the pH with each added um, volume of the titrant. And this can be seen on the right-hand side figure. So essentially, it is, um, we start recording from the zero milliliters of um, sodium hydroxide added. We record the pH, then we add a bit, then we record again the pH, and we also record again the uh, titrant volume. And from the difference in the pH between these two points and from the difference in the volume, we calculate this uh, delta pH divided by delta volume. And when we do this for each consecutive point relative to the previous point, then we see that at the range where the uh, 
where the acid was still strongly present in the sample, this uh, derivative is very close to zero. So the pH does not very much change here in the plateau region from um, yeah, zero milliliters to almost 10 milliliters. However, then very close to the stoichiometry point, the pH starts rising rapidly, but the derivative of the pH against uh, volume of the uh, titrant starts to rise even more rapidly. And we can very cl clearly now see where the stoichiometric point was. So we can take the reading from here. Uh, in this example, we can actually see that there are two points for which the derivative is very close. So in this case, we can actually take the uh, mean of these two points. Uh, so the mean volume between these two points as the end point of the uh, titration. Uh, however, in addition, so we can also take the second derivative. So this is the same operation of seeing how does the delta pH over delta volume change with the volume of the sodium hydroxide. So we take a second derivative of this change uh, and we can observe a kind of a heartbeat curve where indeed in the region where uh, there was still acid left in the solution and afterwards, after the stoichiometric core, we get a very flat plateau with a zero, so the second derivative is zero. Uh, but at the stoichiometric curve, we see a really sharp heartbeat. And the middle point of this heartbeat is then uh, determined to be uh, the uh, end point of the tit uh, titration. And this comes uh, because the uh, derivative is changing sign uh, in this uh, stoichiometric point. Uh, and here is an example how this can be used for very complicated titrations. So we were before uh, talking that uh, for indicator titrations, the, it is very important that the jump on the titration curve would be uh, very high to find a suitable indicator to um, actually visualize this from the, with a the color change in the titration. For potentiometric uh, detection of the endpoint, it is still very important that there would be um, a jump on the titration curve, but it can be slightly smaller. So here is an example of a potentiometric endpoint determination for a mixture of two acids. So one of them is uh, hydrochloric acid and the other one is uh, acetic acid. And their mixture is very, very hard to um, determine just with uh, indicator because they are both reacting and selecting uh, the indicator so that they, it would indicate only the first endpoint here at 10 milliliters is uh, very, very hard. But if this is now done potentiometrically, so by recording the pH change with each added drop of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, titrant, and when we actually take now the derivative of this titration curve, then it becomes clear that we can actually also uh, determine the endpoint for both of the endpoints uh, separately. So, if, from this point of view, potentiometric titration can be also used for more for cases which are harder uh, to determine the endpoint with the indicator solutions. Uh, however, lastly, I would like to stress that uh, potentiometric endpoint determination is not only for acid based titration, but it can be also done uh, for many other applications. For example, one of the very famous examples is determination of water with uh, Carl Fischer titration, where actually the endpoint is also determined uh, potentiometrically, even though, um, and it's not by pH, but rather by uh, the uh, detection of, of other species with potentiometry in the uh, solution. 
that was shortly about uh, potentiometric titration.